Hey everyone, it's Miss Myring. So with our distance learning rolling out this week, I wanted to give a little tutorial about how you can access our online textbook at home. A lot of our reading from here until the end of the school year is going to come from that online textbook. Now, there are going to be some things that I'm going to supplement using articles and things like that, but for the most part, a lot of our fiction reading is going to come from this online textbook. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up an internet search engine of some kind, and it can be any kind except for Safari. So if you're one of my Mac users, like I have a Mac, if you look down here, I've got the Safari emblem. Our textbook doesn't work the greatest on Safari. Internet Explorer, uh, Google Chrome, Firefox haven't been too big of an issue. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome. And what you're going to do is you're going to head straight to the Sydney City Schools website. And once you're there, you're going to see all of the new things that have been added since the COVID um, cancellations, I guess. And you're going to go over here to where it says quick links. So over here is a lot of good information. What we want to get to the online textbook is this power school parents and students. So you're going to click on that and then just type in your password just like you were going to go to check your grades. Now, if you don't know your five number code and your five letter password, you're going to have to either get in contact with me or Jamie Whited, our tech guy. And once you get here, this is just stereotypical power school. One of your classmates was nice enough to let me use theirs. And over here on the left-hand side is what we want. So on the navigation bar, you're going to go down to where it says Pearson Courses and click on that. So if you look over here on the left, you have all of the classes that have textbooks available online. So you'll see there's no science. You have your ELA, your math, and then your history, depending on which class you're actually in. You can either click on it directly from here or you can go over here on the right where it says learning systems and you can hit on click on Pearson Realize. So this is kind of like the home base of the Pearson textbooks. You've got the browse, the classes and the grades, and you've also got those three things up here. So in browse is where you're going to find your textbooks. So we've got the American history one and then common Common Core Literature Grade 8, and then the Pearson Literature Essay Score. So you're going to click on Common Core Literature and then Student Edition. So you want to see that red bench with the light post. And I don't know why they have you do this, but you got to click on it again. <laughs> now, some of you may see a message about using Adobe Flash Player. If that comes up, hit Allow. This will not work if you don't have access to Adobe Flash Player. Um, all of the school Chromebooks, you should be fine. Those shouldn't be an issue. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work on your personal devices. But what you should see once you get onto the online textbook is this. So if you look, this looks exactly like the hardback cover that we have in my classroom. So pretty straightforward from here, but I am going to walk you through just kind of the navigation tools that are available. So over here on the left is just different tools that, like I said, it can navigate you or it's just, I need help, I don't know what to do. So with the table of contents, this is a quick way to just jump to different parts in the book. Um, we're never going to actually just do a straight unit. You're never going to have to go to, like, say, unit four. I like just using stories here and there. So you don't necessarily need this one, but it's there for you to use. If you ever get confused about what some of these buttons mean across the bottom, they have a how-to document, which tells you what each thing does, what it means. And then underneath that's a pronunciation guide, which has just basic common pronunciation rules. Glossary. So when you're reading, if you ever come across a word you don't know and you assume that it's going to be in the glossary you can just go to the letter click on it and then you've got pronunciation word and then the definition of it so you've always got access to the glossary 
And then on Pearson realized there's such a thing as called a notes tool. So when you are reading, if you create notes, it'll store it here. And then you can find the specific ones that you want from there. And a similar thing, if you're in the middle of reading a story and you get called away, say you have to go somewhere or say um, Chromebook dies or something like that, you can bookmark it and it'll kind of save your spot and then you can come back and click on it from here. So that's the left hand um, taskbar and you can hide it or have it out. I like to have it hidden because it's not really helpful once you get to where you're going. Um, then down along the bottom, we've got some different tools. So for navigating from page to page, we've got arrows. Just click on them to go forward or back. And it's very similar to the arrows that are on the sides of the page. So when you put your mouse over it, it'll change color. And then the same thing on this side. Just navigating back and forth. If you want to zoom in or out, little magnifying glasses like always. And let's say that there's a picture, or maybe there's a timeline or some kind of a text feature where it spans over two pages. This is just what one page would look like in our textbook. If we want to see both, that's what this button down here is where it says two page view. You're going to click on that and it would be both pages. So the page gets restored to what it would look like in our actual textbook. Then you can always bring it back to the one if you want it. And then as you read, you have arrow tool, you have a hand tool, so if you wanted to go up and down, highlighting, so say you wanna remember specific things, you can choose to highlight it. And then once again, adding a note, so say you wanna remember something, you just click on the note tool. Ooh, I'm struggling. And then you can bold it, underline it, italicize it, and then just save it. So that is now there. It has a push pin. So if I wanted to go back, it would be in that uh, notes manager that I showed you just a little bit ago. And then if you wanted to have it fit to page to make it nice and big, you can click on that. If you wanted to, or sorry, fit to width, making the words nice and big, or if you want to fit to page to see the full thing, it's a quick way to zoom. And then once again, if you want to make a bookmark, so say I want to leave, do you see how the corner of the page just bent? And then if I would go over here to that taskbar again, I now have a bookmark on page four. So I could automatically just go back to there and it doesn't matter where I'm at in the book, so I could be way back here. And then I want to go back to where I was, ta-da. So that's that tool. And then these two, don't really apply to you because you're not projecting it onto anything and you're not linking it to anything. But once again, another quick way to get to the glossary. And then another cool tool that some stories have and some do not is there's an audio mode. You can have a story read to you. Um, unfortunately, the first story we're going to read doesn't have an audio book, but it's there for some of the other ones. Now, when it comes to the actual stories we're going to be reading, I will give you page numbers. So if you wanted to go to something like, so if we go to page 370, so poetry, where is one that we read? So you would just type it in, it would take you right there. Now, if you didn't know what page it was on, uh, you could just type it in up here. The first story we're going to be reading is The Speckled Band by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And any page that The Speckled Band is even mentioned on the textbook gets pulled up. So as you can see, it's mentioned in the table of contents. It's mentioned on the resource page. It's mentioned in the back of the book. And then even within the story itself, it's mentioned several times. So you have to be careful and not just go, oh, okay, I'll take that one, because that's not always going to take you to the story. Like if you look, I'm now in the middle of the story, and I would have to go and try to find the beginning from there. So when you're looking at these pictures, sometimes you can actually see the title page. So like if I'm looking at it, Right there, I see some bolded words. I see something that looks like maybe an author underneath that. That's going to be the title page. So there's two ways you can do it. Type it in straight down here, or you can search for it up here. 
now. Uh, as you try to log in to the online textbook, if you have issues that maybe you don't have Adobe Flash Player on your computer, or maybe it's not loading something, please let me know, okay? My email is on Google Classroom, and I would be more than happy to help you, okay? So if you are stuck and you don't know how to get here, you can feel free to rewatch this. You can feel free to take this step by step, but if for some reason it doesn't work, let me know, okay? So that's how you get onto the online textbook. And once again, if you have issues, let me know, okay? Well, see you guys in class.